Well, I guess it's time we say goodbye. I guess we should explain how we got here. Right after running through the entire game plan thoroughly, Rochelle was like, wait, there's a cat named Jerry? Why is there a cat? And obviously, I was in awe that they still didn't grasp the plan. So I was like, okay, let's go over this one more time. So you remember Station 89, the game we worked on for two years, the one we started from zero experience in game dev, put all our blood, sweat and tears into and continued development into its prototype phase? We take that and take it to a very tall building and kick it off. Then Delina interjected and was like, like, completely get rid of it? That's a little extreme, dude. That is a bit extreme. Is there a less dramatic alternative? Okay, well, we'll just put it on a figurative shelf for now. So I continued. Then we partake in some sort of game dev event that will make us sacrifice our sanity in exchange for a finished game, such as the upcoming Ludum Dory game jam. We'll get the jam's theme, sit down, brainstorm some killer ideas, and after 72 hours of pure game dev agony, boom, we've got a game, and it's hopefully functional. Ricardo, we got that part, but what about the cat? And yeah, I totally forgot about the cat. Right, the cat, get in there. So after we finish the game jam and get outstanding reviews and applause, we reach the top rankings of all categories, we'll then post their vlogs on our entire process. And the cat? The cat, coming up. We'll then continue the cycle of agony, finish some new games and post more dev vlogs about it. We'll publish in the finished game by the end of it. We'll soon be living the game dev dream. And... 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 Oh yeah! And we get a cat as the studio mascot to name it Jerry, because Tom gets a bad rep nowadays. Ah, I guess we didn't need a cat. Now that I think of it, we don't really need a cat. No, no, no! Keep the cat, I like it. We can name it Puddles. Well, either way, the end result remains the same. We start over, smaller, more interesting projects that definitely won't drive us insane. Release a couple of games this year and revisit Station 89 with more experience and the needed skills to tell the story we've been dreaming of. And to my surprise, they were like, yeah, I say we go for it. I don't see why not. Surprised that they actually bought it, I continued. If that's a unanimous vote, then I guess there's only one thing to do. Well, I guess it's time we say goodbye. Hey guys, yes, we failed, or, or, or in a positive way. As we explained in the previous day vlog, scope can quickly become an issue. And we had tried to mitigate this, but just because you have a solution doesn't mean it's the best solution. After one and a half years of part-time game development, we've decided to take a small break from Station 89 and to rather take part in some game jams and produce some smaller titles from them. So let's jump to it. Uh, the Ludum Dora 52 game jam. It was a game jam coming around early January and we decided to target this as our first jam. The jam's theme this year was Harvest. So we immediately got together and started brainstorming some ideas. We knew we wanted some roguelike card mechanics and settled for fast-paced creature brawler. For the concept of the game, you awaken in the underworld, and the only way to escape is to get through this sealed gate. To unlock this gate, you need to go collect a flame from each of the nine levels of the underworld, all with their own unique set of challenges and guardians. As you descend deeper into this afterlife, you will encounter and battle completely unique creatures, each with unique stats. Once a creature is defeated, you can either use it for battle or harvest its soul. This constant micromanagement of battle tactics and harvesting will be very fast paced, so you'll have very little time to decide what the most effective moves will be. For creature generation, we opted to use AI image generation to create some unique concepts following a consistent theme and art style. With the implementation of the card system, I fought back and forth on if I wanted a 2D or 3D integration of the cards and mechanics. I literally rebuilt the system several times not being able to make up my mind, but eventually settled on 3D actors and then got the basic play inputs working and somewhat functional battle system going. I implemented a real stupid, um, <clears throat> a brute force AI algorithm to battle against. I also joyfully spent an embarrassing amount of time struggling through Unreal's array objects. The entire time I was storing creature cards in arrays and 
only accessing the shallow copies, not the real objects. So this led to when I would set the health of a creature, I was setting health to a copy of the creature, not the actual creature. And it turns out the difference between a direct reference and the shadow copy is this little diamond and circle on the node itself. So, thanks Unreal. <laughs> Rocher went through designing the look and feel of the game. He designed nine levels, taking inspiration from the nine circles of the afterlife. And for the levels, he opted for a low poly cubic style, which really fit nice with the creature cards, and provided a ton of creative freedom and allowed for quicker iterations. We stacked the levels on top of each other to give the illusion of starting from the top and descending deeper. And finally, pinning the world in darkness and adding a single emission of light really provided the atmosphere we were aiming for. He also took lead on the UI, as he had to learn how Unreal's UI works and started working on a menu where the creatures will watch you as you begin your descent. Delina took charge of all the sound design for the game, literally creating not one, not two, but nine soundtracks, one for each level. Each soundtrack also incorporated variables to use with Fmod, allowing the percentage of your soul to either build up or dim down the track, providing audio feedback for the player's life. We also needed some sort of tutorial, so Delina recorded some dialogue of the creatures whispering and explaining the aspects of the game. Quickly, it awaits. The harvest. The harvest. The harvest. It begins. We literally worked night and day on this, sacrificing our sleep, our sanity, our own souls, and descending deeper and deeper into madness. We were making great progress, but the jams deadline was approaching real fast. And closing to the end, we encountered a major issue. The image assets were not loading in the packaged build. Something about an asset manager, I've not looked into it yet. At the time, I tried every solution I could think of. The countdown was still going, and the final hurdle in the road came our way. The project size was way too high. We tried various methods to compress the project files, remove unused assets, but it all became futile as time ran out. And we were unable to submit our game to the game jam. Now the natural reaction of 72 hours of non-stop work going to waste would be to go insane. But we were more proud and relieved of how much we actually accomplished. Either that or we were just excited to go to bed. We did accomplish what we set out to do and we learned a shit ton, which is pretty invaluable. So now what happens? Well, we have a finished early prototype that we can build off of. We will take the next few months to polish this project up, add some roguelike elements, uh, some inspiration from games such as Hades, and write a narrative to engage the player into this world. What's up guys, uh, Future Ricardo here. Big update, we just uploaded the game over to Steam. You'll see from the screenshots, there's been a rework done on all of the art and styling of the game. We fleshed out the narrative and implemented some cool mechanics. So please do us a favor, wishlist the game. You'll be helping us so, so much. This will give us the opportunity to pitch it to publishers. And yeah, let's go back to the devlog. Cool. And if you like the content, you know what to do. It takes like two seconds. Just like, like it and subscribe. You know, I'll just wait for you to go ahead and do that. Or I won't even look. Like, it's like zero pressure. With that said, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, unless you forgot to hit that bell, then quickly hit the bell. Otherwise you won't be notified. But yeah, until then, uh, take care and cheers.